Hi guys, what's up? It's Kate, quickly reporting in. This is Date Fails. It's been 25 years since the last episode, and I honestly feel extreme anxiety doing this. Oh my God, I need a cocktail. Should I make a drink? I don't wanna to have to edit this. All right, there's so much to talk about. Um, first of all, the year's almost over, so we can call this a year end wrap up. Secondly, these flowers are dead, but they are real, but they're dead. But I keep, I leave them. I, I like to keep them here because there's a little piece of me that thinks if they ever come back to life, E.T. will show up. And that's my favorite movie. One of them. Um, all right. This is so funny. I'm really nervous. I'm really nervous because I feel, um, I don't even know how to start. It's funny, the other night I was like in my head going through everything I would talk about on this podcast and I was going to make notes and kind of go through the year and then I started thinking I want to be spontaneous and stuff but then I started thinking that's when you say the wrong thing and I just, I, I feel like, well let's start here. I haven't done a podcast. I think the last podcast I did was probably around, gosh, I don't know, beginning of the pandemic, which was what, June or, I don't know, April, May, June, somewhere in there, July, I have no idea. I think June, I don't know. It's been a long time. The reason it has is because, um, well, there's a lot of reasons. The last one I did, uh, I talked about being really depressed during quarantine, which I was in Hollywood. It got so weird, man. It was just like total lockdown. There was like military outside my apartment. It got really dangerous. It even got dangerous in the daytime, which like, I mean, I already lived in like a very, um, I don't know the right word for the neighborhood. It was never like the most dangerous, but it was just, it's grungy. It's Hollywood. It's like living in a dirty inner city urban area. And it's not the worst part of LA, but it's like medium bad. And um, I was kind of just freaked out. And I was feeling like, uh, leading up to this, I was already feeling burnt out. I was feeling burnt out on so many things. I was feeling burnt out on this podcast. I was feeling burnt out on, not burnt out on standup. I'm rarely burnt out on standup. That is one thing I very rarely get tired of doing. But I was feeling burnt out on attention. That sounds so weird because um, in my line of work, you would think that I love attention. But actually, tonight, I was, I was literally saying to my friend how much I've turned into a complete introvert. Like, this lockdown doesn't bother me anymore. I moved back towards the beach in Venice. And now I live walking distance to the beach. And when I walk outside in the morning, I see water and it's like a way better environment for me to be happy. And I'm a nature person. So, um, I, I have just been like every day I wake up and I have a good walk on the beach. I have a good morning. I get a coffee. I write a little, I've been writing a lot. I've been journaling a lot. And um, I, it's hard to explain this. It's really, really, really hard to explain this. But like the longer I went without doing the podcast, the more I just felt like I started to relax. And I, I think it, I mean, who can even describe Everybody's been through so much this year and I am weird because I'm very impulsive and I like to move a lot. Like I had a job for years where I like kind of lived out of a car and, but I think the reason that I liked the job where I lived out of the car, I used to do mobile marketing tours and um, I would be like an event MC and when I did that, a lot of times I would drive my own vehicle instead of flying.
because you save money. So like the way that worked, it was like you could drive or you could book your own flights, but they would pay you enough to book flights. So if you saved it, you could make extra money that way. And I would camp instead of staying in hotels and then save my hotel per diem. But I think the reason that that lifestyle was so good for me is because I don't like a lot of stuff. I like, I'm like a minimalist. Like I don't, I get overwhelmed with a lot of stuff. If I go into like a forever 21, try to put together an outfit, it's not going to happen. I, if like, if I have to dress well for something, it's either going to be a dress, like a one piece or someone dresses me. Like, I don't know how to take like a bunch of stuff and whittle it down to something small. And so anyway, um, I started to feel like overwhelmed with all the amount of change that happened to me this year because the comedy store closing first of all is like I can't explain to you guys well it didn't close close but it closed for the lockdown and then it's still not open for like regular shows and that is like I didn't realize till the pandemic how much the comedy store became a place that if I was having a bad day or if I was lonely or I don't have family in LA except for my gay uncles in the valley, which are like 40 minutes away. Um, but I didn't realize how much, if I was having a bad day or if I was lonely, the comedy store became family. Like if you went to the comedy store any night of the week, you see at least three or four people you love there, always, usually more. And even if you see people you don't love, they're familiar. It's a place to go get a hug. It's a place to have a drink. It's a place to hide in the back bar for comedians and like feel in an environment that's comfortable. So no matter how turbulent my life was, I always knew I had that. And also I think I didn't realize how much I was using the stage to like work out everything in my life. So like anytime anything was going on in my life that was weird, I would turn it into jokes and I would get to go up and make jokes about it. And that really helped me cope with depression. I don't mean like clinical depression. I mean like, like times that were really difficult. I think that, um, Hollywood for me, the neighborhood, not the like business of Hollywood, but the neighborhood, it was very, um, not my kind of neighborhood because I love nature no nature in Hollywood. It's man-made nature. <laughs> it's like living in Manhattan. And I'm talking fast. I'm nervous. It's hilarious. Um, so anyway, I just started to realize that once the comedy store was taken away and stand-up was taken away and I, my outlet for working out my shit was taken away and there's no nature there. And now we're on lockdown and I, was broke because I had like a whole bunch of gigs coming up that was going to be, they were going to sort of be my like get out of debt gigs. Like I had like the most work ever booked and like some of the coolest shit I was excited for and it all got canceled, which I know everybody's shit all got canceled. So it's, it's not like I'm doing worse than anybody else, but all that happened. And then on top of all that, I'm an independent contractor. Comedians are not on anybody's payroll. So like here in California, I don't know what the fuck is going on with the unemployment for independent contractors, but I applied so many times. I called a million times. I never got a check. I got a, a credit card thing, a debit card in the mail, but I never got paid. It doesn't matter because in the end things became okay, but it's just, it was a very stressful time. So to be completely honest with you guys, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. It's like, it's like hard to explain, but for so long I've used my personal life as like the crux of what I do. And I just was feeling like, uh, this is not really time in my life. I want to let people into. And even though I love showing like vulnerability and I, I love like letting you guys see what I'm going through it. Cause I think it helps, but like, I just couldn't. And then I got a boyfriend and my boyfriend is famous. I've had famous guys that I've dated, but I've never had a famous boyfriend. And that is a whole nother level of dealing. That's hard to explain. Cause 
Um, I like my whole podcast. It's hard for me to do any podcast without being personal because it's who I am. Like I'm an open book and I love being an open book. But at the same time, it was starting to wear on me a little because it was like, it's hard to explain, but a lot of shit that happens to me is hilarious. doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. And then I share it with you guys. But like at some point, I don't know if it's my age or if it's like enough dating or what, I started to think to myself, like one, if you keep letting everybody into all your relationship stuff, none of them are going to work ever because it puts pressure on the relationship. Like if everybody's hearing all about it, it freaks the guy out. And it also freaks me out because it can get embarrassing. Like I told you guys all this stuff and then he dumped me or I told you how crazy I am. Or also other guys might listen to this and I might date in the future and hear how crazy I am. So basically I don't want people to know how crazy I am. Um, I'm just kidding. But also like I um, never had to protect someone else's privacy or their families because all the guys I dated it was not serious enough to warrant that. And also, for the most part, I could kind of just like sort of half-ass pretend what they do or who they were and you guys would never figure it out. This is a little different. So, what I'm trying to say is, it kind of paralyzed me with this podcast. Now, don't get me wrong. I can do this podcast and I can just like have guests and tell other people's stories and I can take calls or answer your questions. But even when I do that, it's hard for me to give advice without using my personal life. It's hard for me to, um, and it's hard for me to get, uh, calls from you guys and I'm not good at producing this stuff. And so like in the past, I've always gone to a studio or I've gone to see Brian Monarch and he helps and like, I suck at this. Literally, I suck at it. And with the pandemic, it makes it even harder. And I don't know. It's just, it's like, I just started to feel like maybe I wanted to do something different. And I started a different podcast once before. And, um, and then I was like, how do I switch this podcast to that? Because I already have so many subscribers here. And basically what I'm trying to say is, I don't want to say this is the last episode of Date Fails because that might not be true, but it's, I can't do it as it was. And I feel really bad because you guys have been like writing me all this time, asking what happened to it. And I haven't exactly known how to answer this. So I am answering it now as best I can. But I, it's like, this is what I really want to do. I really want to do a show that's like, a weekly show that's what I'm learning and it can be anything I'm learning because I have fucking learned so much during this quarantine. I've learned so much. I'm learning to play piano. Is this a hole in my, whatever, that's a string. I'm learning to play piano. I'm learning how fucking strong I am. It's funny because um, relationships aren't easy and there's been like bumps in the road and stuff and there's been times that in the past I've gotten to see my growth. Like in the past I would have freaked or panicked or whatever. And now I'm all like a strong, badass bitch. I am so, I got so used to being alone at the beginning of this quarantine that now I just feel like I really found myself. I found the friends who are important to me. I found the kind of relationship that I know I want now. I found like so much out about myself during this. And I hope you guys did too. And that's why in some ways 2020 was a good year for me, even though it was a scary ass year and everything changed. I feel grateful that I learned so much about myself and I feel stronger moving forward and I feel excited about some other stuff that I'm doing. Oh my God, you guys, like I've made t-shirts during this, like just for fun. I learned to crochet. I might just start doing like whatever I'm learning that week, just show you guys, even if it's not an activity, even if it's just like mentally, I learned, I learned that I want to protect my personal life more. And I learned that um, I'm listening to my body and my mind, meaning like if I feel like I just need to do nothing for a day or two, I don't feel guilty anymore. Then also I totaled my car, which was a bummer. I have my car in Nashville, which is, 
a place I've been visiting more and more because my my guy lives there and I was um driving at like 10 a.m totally sober like a idiot I am so stupid I looked at my phone for a second because I was using my phone for GPS and when I looked up I ran right into a truck a big truck and it totaled my car and my airbag deployed so I got a concussion and then I I was really like fucked up I was really fucked up I'm still a little fucked up I was really fucked up for like a week and then I felt better all two weeks. And then I felt better, all better. I thought I was healed. And then I went and played soccer here in Venice Beach. And I headered the ball. And I reactivated like all my concussion symptoms. And now it's been not so easy. So that's the other thing. It's like now I'm trying to heal my brain. So what I'm trying to say to you guys is my plan is January. I'm, I'm chilling out for a couple more weeks and I'm gonna enjoy my birthdays coming up this week and I'm gonna enjoy that and I'm gonna enjoy um, Christmas and stuff and New Year. I will be at Wise Guys, Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City, I'm coming at you! But I'm gonna be with Brad Williams, I'm gonna open for Brad. I can't wait, that's my boy! And uh, and then January, I'll come back and I'll bring out, um, I'll, I'll start doing this again as much as I can, but also when I do episodes of other things, I'm just going to slap them up here on the date fails feed. So you guys get it. Cause I know you just, I know you guys, I think you guys really just want to hear from me and I want to talk to you too. So that's that. I would go on longer, but actually my friend's coming over for dinner. <laughs> these flowers are, I should probably take these out. Anyway, so that's it. I wish you guys the best. I hope you're good. This was very odd, but oh, glad I did it. I need a drink. Jesus. I really do. Okay.